2016 storyline is largely about white working class voters and whether um, their intentions and the degree of passion they had was, was missed by mainstream American newsrooms, maybe all newsrooms. And implicit in that question or explicit is the, is the idea that elites in the media um, are simply too out of touch geographically or socioeconomically to get what those people are feeling and to hear them. That I mean, that, that's, that feels kind of on target to me. Yeah. I think there's something there. I just wrote a piece about this, actually. Um, and I would put in the poor white working class as opposed to um, the white working class, because obviously white working class people, we can identify them um, as folks who make over $30,000, between $30,000 and $120,000, depending on what their job is. And it's more of an identity than it is really a socioeconomic mm -hmm. position. But yes. The short answer is yes. We knew in May that Trump voters, the median income for Trump voters was $72,000. We knew that in May. <laughs> you know, like, what were we doing? On, like, what I was talking about before, only filming, only giving coverage to uh, folks who we deem as the poor white working class at these rallies with holding up their Confederate flags, blah, 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 um, saying all of these sort of like incendiary things, um, and not concentrating on the Trump voter that makes a lot more money than that, who might still obviously identify as the white working class, but makes more money than that. Yes, we that was a giant miss. Giant, giant, giant miss. That to me was the biggest mistake that the media made in this election cycle. I, I'm totally with you there. And I would add that um, typically the journalists who are in all of those places that the media failed to cover were local journalists working for local papers, which have since more, right? disappeared um, yeah. or been bought up and disbanded. Right. Um, and so when people talk about like the media elites not caring about the white working class, it's like, well, being a journalist did not used to be just some sort of elite profession in New York. There used to be local papers where that was your day job for a lifetime of middle class work, and you did it where you lived. And so I think the disintegration of that system of local newspapers and so forth was very detrimental during this election in actually getting the kind of coverage we would have needed, exactly what Collier's talking about, to understand what these voters were thinking. And I could not agree more about the class question. You know, depending on where you are in the country, the demographic of the Trump voter may be sort of working class. And it's hard to say what that means when we're only talking about it by income bracket and not by nature of what your actual job is and what your life experience is. Yeah. But like that's middle class in a lot of these communities. Yeah. It's not poor. And so it's like looking at poor people, people of color, especially as you know the sort of scroungers who are like living off of the taxes paid by the $72,000 a year cop or small business owner or whatever. Um, and that's a narrative that I think got lost yeah. in a lot of this it's conversation about issue. demographics. I mean, Clinton, the median income for a Clinton supporter was $61,000. That's a lot less, you know? And we're talking about the, the narrative in media now has been dominated by, oh, the white working class was, was um, you know, dismayed by by the, the the sort of like Clintonian like machine slash legacy NAFTA exactly and and that's like poor people voted for Clinton like that's not true and so we really have to change the way that we're looking at this I think entirely we relied on bad numbers so a lot of what we're talking about is just like a narrative and like you know how the sports coverage gets shaped and all that is uh, the the, the magicians who got 2008 and 2012 right did not predict the right group of voters that are coming out. In fact, all across the world, they keep missing these populist things. They miss Bibi's re-election, they miss the Columbia peace deal, they miss Brexit, and they miss Trump. So new people are turning out, and old projections are breaking down. And so this isn't just narrative stuff. It's uh, here's what the numbers are showing. And so if past results are any indicator, which they haven't been, uh, here's where we're at. The second thing is uh, the media is not a weed. Uh, you know, shout out to everyone who uh, sends me angry notes. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 you, you, you'll find out soon what it's like in the real world. Uh, the media is, is, is small, it's in financially lousy shape, it's underpaid. You lose these small town papers, 
Um, you start clustering the media in big cities that have very different politics and, and people and issues. Uh, you know, like what, what, what it means to have guns here, what it means to have immigrants here is just very different and should be. Um, and, and this is where all the reporters are based. They're looking at lousy numbers that, that have come to be revered and one of the few places where, where journalist, journalistic operations have been investing money. And uh, you have this, uh, this, this massive blind spot and it's just, been, uh, it's just been exposed. And now, those, again, those same smart people are trying to uh, explain how we got here.